Welcome back. You're watching today. Now, during the 45th anniversary of Robert Subukwe's death on the 27th of February in 1978, Robben Island Museum declared 2023 the year of Subukwe. The 3rd of May will mark 60 years since the anti-apartheid activist was taken to solitary confinement. Upon the completion of his three-year sentence for leading an anti-pass campaign in Soweto, the government of the day created an act dubbed the Subukwe Clause, which allowed the justice minister to extend the sentence of any prisoner for more for one more year at a time for more on subukwe and the harsh conditions he was subjected to we're joined by professor Seth cooper who's the president of the pan-african psychology union thank you very much for joining us and it's an important acknowledgement that we have here because uh, it was so significant the life that was lived by subukwe but also the torture that he was exposed to as a prisoner on Robben Island. Tell us a little bit about the initiative and why it is so important. Well, I chair the Robben Island Museum and the Museum Council decided unanimously to dedicate this year to that event that you mentioned and to the 60th anniversary of when Sobukwe was banished to Robben Island. That will be on Wednesday where we're having a specific event that veteran journalist who was 16 years old uh, during the past campaign in 1960, uh, Joe Tlorwe, will give us an address and his recollections of that momentous period in our history. Uh, Robben Island has been a site for banishment of a lot of people, and this is also the 60th anniversary of the Rivonia trialists uh, coming to Robben Island. So it's a very historic occasion. And we want to acknowledge those who brought us here. Mm. Tell us a little bit about the activities that people can look forward to. I know there is a lecture, but there are other activities that uh, look to shine a spotlight on those, as you've just aptly described, that contributed uh, to the struggle for freedom. He was kept isolated. He was isolated for six years. Uh, restricted to a little house, and unlike the rest of us who were on Robben Island from 1963 to uh, 1991, where we lived in, uh, where we were arrested and kept in detention in cells, whether single or communal, he was alone, isolated, and under the care of the police, who did not talk to him. He was isolated, as I said. He had very few visitors, and eventually, his family was allowed to visit him. So we will unveil that house on Wednesday. People will have a glimpse into uh, the life that Sobukwe led in his six years of isolation on Robben Island. And we will have, as a result of that unveiling, other artifacts uh, showing his involvement in the struggle and also have intergenerational dialogues encouraging young people to understand our history. Because if we don't know where we've come from, we can't understand our present and we cannot certainly take ourselves to the future. So young people play an important role in that. And we uh, will also officially announce, I may as well announce it now, that uh, we opening up Robben Island to young people under the age of 15. Uh, young people under the age of 15 will be allowed free on Robben Island. Obviously, they have to have liability and an adult, uh, responsible adult uh, accompanying them. But these are some of the things we will be doing. And it's part of leading to the 30th anniversary of our democracy next year, when there will be a massive reunion of, unfortunately, uh, only uh, about 500 ex-political prisoners left in our country from some 2,500 when democracy began. I want us to lament on that point a little further. You raised something that I wanted us to talk about, young people and their understanding of the struggles of those who came before us, Prof. And now you're announcing that uh, children under the age of 15 uh, can get a sense of the history that built the democracy that we live in today. Um, why was that decision so important to make? But also perhaps if you could put in there understanding that solitary confinement does 
some amazing, and I don't mean that in a good way, things to the mind and really the psyche of a person and their willingness to continue on with that struggle. How do we make young people understand that component as well? Well, the first thing is not to expose young people to the horrors we experience. So we will have uh, people who have been in prison, and particularly in Robben Island, telling their stories in a way that young people can understand it and can understand what it means to be active. Like right now, young people who constitute the majority in our country are not registered to vote. They don't participate in the political system. And the kind of activism we saw in that period, right up to the 90s when we had the democracy, is not there. And we want to instill in young people a sense of agency because it is in young people's hands to participate and to create change in our country. And the various stories of Robben Island from pre-colonial times, from uh, Krotoa, uh, who the, the Dutch settlers in the 1650s called uh, Anna, uh, her story and how she played a role and how, and, and she was a pubescent uh, girl at that time, of course, raped by Van Riebeck, but then uh, married Van Meerhof. And so you have a lineage of Meerhof. There's a wine farm called Meerhof Wine Farm. Uh, and I think young people should realize that the history of our country is so complex and it needs to be unveiled so that all of us can feel we are part of this country on the southern tip of the African continent where we still find the oldest ethnic, living ethnic group, the Komani San, uh, in, the, in the southern Kalahari, bordering Namibia, Botswana, and South Africa, to whom over 95% of the world's population can trace their DNA, as can a significant number of Afrikaners in this country trace their DNA to Krotoa, for instance. So that embedded history needs to be opened up to scrutiny so that we realize where we come from. And of course, if we want to uh, go forward, as you mentioned earlier, it's important for young people to then uh, protect the freedom with which yourselves, uh, Robert Subuku and other struggle uh, stalwarts have fought for, um, encouraging them to vote and to make sure that the democracy or the basic uh, services that we fought for as a country continue to be delivered to us. And so I'm wondering if you think about the elections next year and if you're concerned that young people won't participate and protect the democracy that was so hardly fought for? Yes, that, that is a fear, because if you look at the statistics, it shows us that young people don't participate. It's about time that young people participated and don't complain about old people taking over when old people are holding the fort and uh, just about dodging some of them. They need to be replaced by young, bright, smarter minds who can take us to the next level. It's not up to my generation and older people to do that. It is for young people. It's for you, uh, Rafi. It's for those uh, of your siblings and others. It's for everyone eligible to participate in democracy, to realize that if you don't participate in that which is there for you, we can't complain about others who are just not doing the right job that we need them to do. So participation restores our sense of hope, it restores our sense of agency, and it gives meaning to what we're doing, and we need to, heaven knows, uh, not continue moaning and groaning and complaining, but need to be part of that solution that we so desperately seek. Mm, active citizenry, thank you very much, uh, Prof. I uh, really appreciate your time this afternoon. That is Professor Seth Cooper, President of the Pan-African Psychology Union. But he's also uh, part of those who will be leading the uh, launch of uh, this particular uh, year of uh, Robert Subukwe on Wednesday, uh, that home being unveiled um, as a uh, point of form for people to learn about um, the struggles of Robert uh, Subukwe, but also the democracy that he fought for.